St. Joseph College Mission. We commit to build the St. Joseph College Educative Family, SJCEF, centered on Christ, to form every member into an integral human person imbued with the gospel values and equipped with excellent quality education and to be an active agent in making a humane society. St. Joseph College Vision St. Joseph College, a Catholic school, envisions an evangelized and evangelizing community, providing excellent integral education and involvement in social transformation. Good afternoon, it's me, Mr. Jun Tingson, your TLE 10 instructor. So for this week, we're going to discuss and take on icing, frosting, and fillings. But before that, we're going to discuss what happened during Module 1 and Module 2. So for the Module 1, we were able to discuss about preparation of sponge cakes and other cakes. So under it is the classification of cakes. The shortened, which is the creamy fat. The unshortened, which is the non-fat. And the hybrid, which is a combination of non-fat and the creamy fat. We also took up the mixing method of cake batters. And there are four. First is the conventional or the creaming method. Second is the muffin method. Next is the one ball method, and the last is the modified conventional method. We also tackled about the mixing techniques in preparation of cakes. Then proceed to the getting ready for baking, which is the proper sequence in mixing until cooling. So you should not miss one or you should not interchange the process so that there will be no failures happen to your cake. And then we also have the preparation of the unshortened cake. I think we tackled that in module two. There are three common unshortened cakes. One is the white sponge cake that is purely uh, mixed with egg whites with little butter but no uh, egg yolk. Second is the yellow sponge cake and last is the chiffon cake which is the common unshortened cake that is available in the market. And we also tackled about the causes of failures on in sponge cake and in cakes. So this usually happens when you are not able to follow correctly the guides in the recipe or not following correctly the getting ready for baking procedure or the procedure itself. Then we also have the preparation of the cake specialties. It's using a different combined mixing method and preparation of the cake depending on the couture cake you want. Couture means uh, very special and is made to order. The next is the characteristic of the good quality cake specialties. So these are the series of standards for your quality cake couture and classified is as good quality one. I think you are ready now for our main topic which is the icing, fillings and frosting. So enjoy the slides. Hello, good afternoon everyone and welcome to our Technology and Livelihood Education 10, Module 3. It's me again, Mr. June Tingson, your instructor, and we're going to discuss about our next topic, the main topic. This topic is the sweetest and the creamiest topic in this school year. So let's begin. Module 3 is about preparing and applying icing, 
frosting and fillings. It is like building a house. After you build it, you have to paint and cover your house with coatings and paintings, depending on your favorite colors. Icing and frosting are sweet coverings or coatings on cakes and cake-related products, like butter cakes, like brownies, like cupcakes, and all. And so, icings and frostings. Confectioner sugar is also called powdered sugar. It is a highly refined sugar in which cornstarch is added to make it super fine and easy to blend. It is the type of sugar generally used for icings and buttercreams. Granulated sugar, also known as white sugar or the sugar. It is used in icings when it is made into heavy syrup. This means that the sugar is first dissolved in water and boiled. So it is converted into heavy syrup that is usually mixed in the milk tea and other condiments or sweet condiments. There are types of icings, and there are lots of it. First is the flat icing. This type of icing consists of sugar, water, corn syrup, flavoring, and butter or shortening, or fats. The ingredients are mixed in a double boiler and cooked to about 110 Fahrenheit until it develops into a smooth, thick paste. Next, we have creamed ice cream, I'm icing. This type of icing is made from shortening or fat, confectioner sugar, milk powder, egg, water or liquid, flavoring, and stabilizer. The steps in preparing these icings are as follow. First, cream fat or shortening and add dry ingredients. Next is add eggs little by little as you continue creaming. Then the third one, add the water and the flavoring. Always use hydrogenated fats as they are most plastic than the other fats. Hence, they cream well, give more luster or shine, finer texture, and volume to the product. The use of butter imparts a delicious aroma and flavor that makes it more appealing and appetizing. For economical use, it is recommended that you use a combination of butter and hydrogenated fats. Or you can add butter flavor to perk up the other flavor like vanilla, lemon, etc. and aroma in the icing. Combination type icing. This type of icing uses the fat and cream icing procedures. The steps are First, prepare the syrup by heating sugar, curd syrup, and flavoring in a double boiler at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, when it melted, allow it to cool. Use the whisk, beater, or wire whip, then whip the egg whites to foamy stage. Pouring the syrup in a thin stream as you continue beating. Next, cream shortening in a separate bowl 
and sugar gradually until the mixture becomes light and fluffy. Then lastly, beat in the cream texture to the whipped egg whites. And now these are the basic kinds of icing. The fondant. It is a sugary syrup that is crystallized to a smooth, creamy white mass. Fondant icing are one of the expensive icing you can buy here in our city. The guidelines for using fondant. Heat fondant over a warm bath. Then, stir it constantly until to thin the icing and make it pourable. Next, do not heat over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or it will lose the shine. Then, if fondant is too thick, thin it with a little simple sugar syrup. And then, add flavoring and coloring as desired. To make chocolate fondant, stir melted chocolate into warm fondant until the desired flavor and color are reached. The chocolate thickens the fondant so the icing may require more thinning with sugar syrup. Apply fondant by pouring or dipping item into it. Buttercream these icing are light, smooth texture, I mean mixture of fat and confectioner sugar, and they may also contain eggs to increase their smoothness or lightness. Buttercream is high caloric icing you can find. And there are three kinds of buttercream. First is simple buttercream. These are made by creaming together the fat and sugar to the desired consistency and lightness. A small quantity of egg white may be whipped in. For example, decorated buttercream. Next, we have the meringue. It's a type of buttercream that are prepared by first beating the egg whites and adding the boiling syrup or sugar. Soft butter is then mixed into the meringue and this is very smooth and light icing. Then we have the French buttercreams. These are similar to the meringue type but the foam is made with egg yolks and sometimes whole eggs and boiling syrup. Again, three types or three kinds of buttercream. We have simple buttercream, meringue, and French buttercreams. And we have the foam type icing. Sometimes called as boiled icings are simply meringues with boiling syrup. Some also contain stabilizing ingredients like nox or gelatin. The flat icing, also called water icing, simply because of its mixture of 10 times sugar, water or liquid, and sometimes syrup and flavoring. So as you can observe, it is mostly made of liquid watery they are used mostly for coffee coffee cakes and sweet rolls like macapuno roll or brasso de mercedes my favorite flat icings are warmed to 100 degree fahrenheit or 38 degrees celsius for application and are handled like a fondant means 
after it is melted, we have to cool it down. And then one of my favorite, the fudge type icing. These are rich cooked icing, heavy and thick. If you can remember if you have or tasted death by chocolate, then this is it. They may be flavored with a variety of ingredients. These are used on cupcakes, layer cakes and loaf cakes. Are also stable and hold up well on cakes and in storage stored icings. It must be covered tightly to prevent drying and crusting and not be attracted by ants and insects. Then we have the royal icing. This is also called the decorating or decorator's icing. Similar to flat icing except that it is much thicker and made with egg whites which makes it hold and brittle when dry. So have you seen the cake decorated like same as Elsa in Frozen or Moana? They use this kind of icing because it will brittle or stiffen. And now let's go to decorating the cake. But before that, you have to know first our decorating tools. Actually, we already encountered some of the tools during our first module. But we have to review that. Okay. First is a turntable. This is similar to a Lazy Susan. It has a leg about six or more inches in height that provides that provides or support to a round table made of wooden or other sturdy material that rotates clockwise or counterclockwise. It also elevates the cake as icing or frosting is applied making it the cake decorator to decorate the cake at, it, at its convenient. We have the acetate. This is a clear plastic film available in 12 by 18 inches, which can be cut according to need. Patterns or designs are piped in the acetate then allowed to dry and then transferred to the cake. These are better than wax paper as designs do not stick and can be easily rolled as in shaping or designing melted chocolate. We have the corrugated cardboard. Corrugated cardboard can be used for a number of uses. One, a serving plate for decorating the cake wrap, the cardboard in aluminum foil, then decorating the cake before transferring it to another serving plate. Two, can use cardboard as cake box storage, which can serve as a gift box. Then three, can use it as container or transporting the cake. Next, spatula, the famous spatula. It is used to spread and flatten icing all over the cakes. It makes frosting and icing much easier to spread than using a rubber scraper or butter knife with which beginners tend to use. Choose spatula made of stainless steel with a thin blade about 6 to 8 inches long and with a rounded tip. Then we have the fondant smoother. 
and fondant comb. Smoothers, edgers, and cake combs are used to create texture, patterns, and designs on the icing on the top and sides of the cakes. Smoothers, which are also called plastic scrapers, are used to create very fine and smooth texture. Edgers and cake combs. It is to create different line patterns or designs. Lastly, we have the smoother called fondant smoother. It's a large plastic tool with a handle used to press fondant or marzipan on top and sides of the cake. We have the cake cutter and the cake stamp. Cookie cutter and cake and cookie stamp used to create variety of shapes and figures on marzipan or fondant. It is used to press outlines into frosting or icing that can be filled with sugar or other topping ingredients. Cookie stamps are rubber stamps that can be used to make imprints of your design using a marzipan or fondant. We have the candy mold, cookie mold, and ice cake tray. This is used for shaping chocolates, cakes, candies, and cookies. We often use that in molding ice. The pastry, I mean the pastry bag. This is a cone shaped bag with either a muslin cloth or plastic lining or plain plastic. Using pastry tip used to pipe icing, frosting, whipping cream, and meringue. Pastry tip is held in place by a coupler. Another pastry bag called the mechanical pastry bag is made of stainless steel and comes with interchangeable tips. Pastry tip. They come in large and small sizes creating different patterns and designs. They can be bought in sets or in individual pieces. So when you push the meringue or icing inside a pastry bag and the meringue will come out from the tip of that pastry tip, depending on the design on the tip, it will create rugue or zigzag depending on your choice and depending on the availability of the design in the market. We have stencils. These are made of thin plastics and are very and are available in many patterns. To use a stencil, put on the top or sides of the cake then allow the decor to fill it up space on the cut pattern or just stencils. It is more used for decorating and embellishing the cake. The edible pattern transfer. These are available in cake supply store like Caro and Marie very famous in Cebu. These are available in cake supply store and a variety of patterns are available to transfer directly into cakes. And now we're going to proceed with covering the cake with icing. The correct icing of the cake is an essential part of successful cake decorating. Here are some easy steps to follow in icing the cake. 
Number one, place the cake upside down on the cake turntable. If the cake has risen to hump or is uneven, trim it until it is leveled. Then smooth the cake over and around with a knife and a soft brush to remove crumbs. Fill up the holes if there are with piece of cake then pile the icing butter or boiled frosting on the top of the center of the cake using a spatula make a swift single circular motion to cover the top of the icing then allow the remaining icing to move down the sides. Sixth, cover sides with icing by moving the spatula sidewards, moving around. Lastly, in case more icing is needed, apply from the base going up, smoothing the surface as you go along. Why do we need to apply it from the base then going up? It is because of the gravity to avoid pulling down of the product or the icing product. Then move the cake board around to even the icing and give the product a professional look. Then we have decorating techniques. Tube works or piping is an essential part of cake decorating. With practice, you will soon master the fine art of decorating a cake using a royal icing and a tube. Learn how to make lines, loops, shells, scrolls, lace piece, basket weaves, and so on. Tips in cake decorating. First, we should be familiar with various icing tubes. They come in various numbers. Each number produces different design. There are tubes of writing, scribing, or creating stars, petals, leaves, and drop flowers. Start practicing on glass. It is easy to clean and it's enable you to master a technique before working on the actual cake. For more difficult pattern, place a pattern beneath the glass and practice follow practice following it. Some piping techniques includes the following. First is choose your pastry tip and place the tip into the pastry bag, then secure a coupler. Second, fill the pastry bag one half to two thirds full with frosting. Fold over the edges to prevent frosting from drying and hardening. Tightly squeeze the sides of the bag until the frosting emerges from the tip into the cake. Control the flow of the frosting to create your desired design. How do you do it? By controlling the pressure in squeezing the icing product or butter product. Again, using the pressure in squeezing the Pastry bag. D. Practice, practice, and practice until you're able to control your hands and fingers. Get the feel of it and develop your own skills and your own techniques and styles. Next is decorating the cake with marzipan and fondant. First is chill cake on a plate for one hour to create a sturdy base. Make sure that 
there is no access to the ants and insects. 2. Cover cake with lace or icing. To cover, simply drizzle onto cakes. Drizzle icing and glaze directly from a spoon on the icing or glaze to cover the spots. 3. Meanwhile, roll out the marzipan or fondant to one half inch thickness on your working table. Then dust the, dust the clean table with confectioner sugar, then rotate and roll again. Why do you have to dust it? So that the product or the phone nut will not stick to the table. Continue rotating and rolling until it is 1 8 or 1 6 inch thick. So we have to flatten it. Then lastly, no, not last, but the fourth is loop the marzipan or fondant with your rolling pin. Then carefully transfer this to the cake, starting at the center. Number 5. Press the marzipan or fondant into the cake and smooth it beginning from the center, then moving around until the top part of the cake is smoothly covered. Make sure that there is no space at the top. Then trim the edges of marzipan or fondant down below where the edges meet the plate. Then cover the plate with plastic wrap to avoid drying out. With the extra marzipan or fondant, you can create decorative figures for your cake decors such as leaves, stars, flower, petals, and such. Use a cookie cutter or a utility knife to cut out shapes. Wet the cut out shapes before attaching them into the cake. If you do not wet it, it will drop down, it will not attach. And let's go or move on to presenting the cakes. In the cake business, the presentation of cake depends on the flawless finish of its icing decors and the serving plate for where it sits. All this will determine the amount of attraction and impact it will create on the viewer. The potential customer which is the viewer, of course. In presenting cake, whether whole or in slices, think about its color, its frosting, filling, and decoration. And then consider how the plate's color and material will affect the cake's appearance. Tips in selecting the appropriate plate. First, Plate with contrasting colors or materials to create dramatic effect. Second, white or cream colored plates are a good choice if you cannot decide which color to use. So choose always white if you have difficulty in choosing colors. Third one, a dark colored plate goes well with a cake with light colors. Deckers and frosting, as in dark chocolate, stands out in a light colored plate. That's what you call contrasting colors. Light and dark. Dark to light. A cake with plain icing like dark chocolate frosting stands out in a silver plate with simple designs around the rim of the plate. A highly decorated cake sits well on a cake pedestal made of opaque glass, ceramics, or metal. Of course, those materials are very sturdy. 
That's why the cake sits well on it. Number six. Colored transparent glass plates can pick up colors in a cake for highlight. Seven. Plates made of sterling silver have a classic elegant richness. Number eight. Multiple whole cakes in their individual plates can be arranged in a large tray for a graphic presentation. So usually in a wedding cake, some of the couple prefer to have um, lots of mini cakes designed and formed rather than a whole cake. So that's for example. Nine, cut or slices of cake can be arranged to, a cre to create a composition as in a pyramid or a tower. They can also be lined up in a long narrow plate or wrapped in a foil or in wax paper bags. So if you have already visited our local bakery, when they will they will display cake in slices. They have to wrap it in wax papers or the elastic plastic. 10. Cut cake arranged in a plate looks interesting with the use of graphic elements. Ice cream, sauce, fruit, whipped cream, and chocolate. They make good visual companion for a plated slice of cake so they, they are placed or designed there like the focal point of the cake so if you have to create a masterpiece you have to put a focal point it is pleasing to the eyes of the consumer 11 drizzle sauce over a cake or drawing sauce or frosting around a cake following its shapes creates a casual, casual impression. Added decorative elements like marzipan flour and sauce beside the cake makes a good presentation. Best example for that is the birthday cake. So they use the cream icing to print your name, your age, and the sponsor of the cake. Then, for the decorative element, they use flowers, flower icing, petals, like that. Or even the number or the number of your age. Twelve, use the appropriate equipment for presentation. Bet it to half or whole cake. Or cut or a slice of it. There are quite a number to choose from. Cake pedestals, cake plates and platters. Bowls, basket, ethnic dishware, paper plates, and napkins. So they can be used to embellish or to be more deco to more dec to make your cake more decorative. Next, we have storing cakes. The shelf life and best method of storing cakes depends on the ingredients. Number one. Perishable ingredients like custard, whipped cream, buttercream, or frosting with raw milk or egg should be refrigerated because low temperature will preserve its viability. That's why it should be refrigerated. Keep in the cake keepers and refrigerate it. Second, sponge cakes, pound cakes, fruit cakes, chiffon cakes, and coffee cakes will stay fresh at room temperature in a cake keeper or wrap in plastic. It should be well wrapped or else insects will attack it before humans do right 
Number three, cakes with moist ingredients and fresh fruits lose their freshness quickly. Store in cake keeper or wrap in plastic or store in the refrigerator. Again, refrigerator for moist ingredients and fresh fruits. Frosted cakes should be consumed within an hour as they are not recommended for storage. Number five, it is best freeze cakes without frosting wrap completely in vapor and moisture proof plastics. Frosting should be frozen separately in a plastic container. Freezing keeps cakes fresh up until three months for as long as they are sealed completely in an airtight container or in an inner layer of wax paper and an outer layer of aluminum foil. As long as it is, it is sealed well, then three months can go. Three months is okay. But beyond that, hmm, I doubt. Six. If cake is to be served, thaw it in room temperature. Thawing takes about two to six hours depending on the size of the cake and room temperature. Thawing is faster if the cake is small and room temperature is high. Like during the summer months, it is slower if the size of the cake is big and it is during the cold months. So if you, if you want to know what thawing means, you may check Google or YouTube it. 7. If cakes are to be given as gifts, keep them fresh by wrapping the, wrapping the first in wax paper or vapor and moist proof plastic. Then wrap again in an organic paper or wrap gift. Well, that's all for today and have a good day. By the way, I will post your assignment or activity in your group page. And before that, we are going to watch videos about IC. Hi, I'm Chef Susie with LearnToCook.com. Today we're going to be making a buttercream icing. The recipe that we're going to be doing is just a simple buttercream with a few ingredients. It's, um, we're going to be adding some sugar to some fat and then we're going to add our cream and our vanilla. So I have all of my ingredients ready. I have my butter, which is one of the richest ingredients that you're going to be using in your baking and in your kitchen. So I have my butter at room temperature. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our mixer. Then we're going to sift our butter, our um, powdered sugar. So we're sifting our powdered sugar to get all of the lumps out of it, so we have a nice smooth icing. And I'm just using my sifter over a parchment. You can also sift it into a bowl. I like to use the parchment because then I can pick it up and just easily pour it into the mixer. And sometimes you get a couple of little bumps on the bottom, and I usually just press those through with my hand. So I have all of my sugar for my recipe. So we're going to start our mixer and then add our sugar slowly. So we're going to add about half of it at a time. If you're making a bigger batch, maybe if you're making a double batch, add maybe one third at a time. This way it won't come up on you on your mixer. So knowing that, we're going to go ahead and start our mixer and get it incorporating. You're going to want to start 
start it out kind of low. If you go too high in the beginning, you're going to have your sugar going everywhere. So you have a little bit coming up here. But if it's any higher, it could really get all over your kitchen, and then your recipe won't be accurate either. So after this mixes in a little bit, we'll go ahead and add the rest of the sugar. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my cream and then my vanilla. I'm going to mix this for a few minutes so it aerates. It's just going to become incorporated and it's going to become lighter in color. Before I let it go for too long, I want to start scraping it down. So I'm going to scrape the edges so I can get my powdered sugar and maybe any lumps of butter off the bottom or the edges. And this just helps your mix incorporate better. And it's good to scrape the bowl down with a rubber spatula like this, one with a handle on it. They work pretty good for doing that. So knowing that, we're going to let our buttercream mix for a few minutes until it aerates. So it's lighter, it's going to be a lot easier to pipe and a lot easier to spread. Now our buttercream is finished mixing. It's lighter in color. It's nice and aerated. So we're going to fill our pastry bag. I like to fold the top over so you can get the buttercream right in the center. And then the top of your bag is not going to get all dirty with the buttercream. So go ahead and scoop some out. Put it in the bag. You're going to shake it down and then twist at the top. Then you can kind of push it down a little bit with your hand. And you're gonna twist it, otherwise when you pipe, it's going to come out the back. You want it to come out the front. So we're ready to go for our decorating. icing that's good to have in your arsenal is royal icing. It's a hard drying icing and it's what we use for piping decorations that need to dry. You can use it for putting together gingerbread houses and icing fun colorful sugar cookies. When it comes to flowers it's also an alternate for piping in buttercream. The difference is that royal icing flowers set so you can let them dry and you can actually make them in advance. Also, they have a longer shelf life, so you can pipe the royal icing flowers, let them dry, and keep them for up to six whole months. One thing to note, because it's hard drying, we don't really use it to cover cakes. Let's get started with this recipe. Making royal icing is actually very, very simple. One of the most important things to keep in mind, though, is that your tools and surfaces are grease-free. So if you've recently used your bowl for mixing cake batter or buttercream, give it an extra wash to be sure, because royal icing will not set up properly if there's any grease. Also make sure that you're using a paddle attachment, and if you have a hand mixer, use the beaters. We want to aerate the icing, but using a whisk will give the wrong texture. You'll also want to have a silicone spatula on hand for the stirring. The ingredients are super simple. I have three tablespoons of meringue powder, four cups of powdered sugar, and five tablespoons of warm water, and that is it. Now I'm going to go ahead and start putting all the ingredients in the bowl. I'm going to put my four cups of powdered sugar in first. Make sure my cup is full here. I think that's pretty good. And then my meringue powder is already pre-measured. And again, this is three tablespoons. And then I'll be measuring five tablespoons of warm water. And then finally, just attaching my paddle. Now I'm going to go ahead and beat this um, on low speed for seven to 10 minutes, but I'm gonna start it really slow because you're gonna see here that the powdered sugar will kind of puff up. So you wanna kind of go slowly with it at first. You 
you can see that my icing looks a little dry, but don't worry because once it gets going, it's gonna start to whip up. Again, all we have to do is beat the ingredients together until the icing starts to form peaks. If your icing is looking really dry and not coming together like this, you can add a teaspoon of water at a time, just enough to get rid of the dry lumps of the powdered sugar. It's been about six minutes and look how fluffy this is. If your icing is still looking a little flat, you can switch to medium speed and I'm going to let this go for one more minute. It's been about eight minutes and I think my royal icing is pretty much done. Normally this takes about seven to 10 minutes on low speed with a heavy duty mixer and about 10 to 12 minutes on high speed if you're using a hand mixer. That's a really long time to have your hand mixer running on high and this icing gets really really thick as you've seen. So if you start seeing your hand mixer struggling, you may want to pause and let it rest a little bit, but not for too long because this icing will deflate. You know that your royal icing is done when the icing looks very matte, and I'm gonna take out the paddle and check right now. When you check the consistency with your whip, you're gonna get stiff peaks. See how this peak doesn't even bend? It's staying put. And that's it. This is about three cups of stiff consistency icing. This is gonna work really well for decorations like roses and making upright petals. But if you're going to use it for borders and drop flowers, you're gonna to need to thin this down a bit. I'll have more information on that in the Royal Icing Consistency video. You've noticed that I covered my bowl with a damp cloth. It's really important because royal icing will crust over very quickly and you want to make sure it's always covered. You need a damp cloth because that will create a humid environment in the bowl so that the royal icing surface stays wet. I want to talk quickly about an ingredient that I mentioned that might not be familiar to you, which is meringue powder. Traditionally, royal icing is made with raw egg whites. Meringue powder is shelf stable, meaning you won't have any food safety issues of using raw egg whites. Meringue powder, however, is not the same as dried egg whites, which is also called egg white powder. You will not get the same results if you use it. Meringue powder is typically hard to find in grocery stores. You'll have better luck with stores that have a dedicated baking and cake decorating aisle, like craft stores, and sometimes the big box stores might carry it too. This royal icing recipe is a great base for your favorite flavorings. I recommend this especially if you're using this as a cookie icing. On its own, this is really just straight up sugar. If you choose to add flavor, make sure you check it first that it doesn't have oil listed in the ingredients because that's going to break down your royal icing. You can add flavorings to taste, but be mindful not to add so much liquid that it affects the consistency of your icing. If you like a lot of flavor, you may want to substitute some of the water in the icing recipe with your flavoring. You may also want to think about using the Treatology flavors because it's designed especially for decorating. Because these flavors are concentrated, you only need to use just a few drops and it won't mess with the consistency of your icing. You can also mix them to create new flavors. Clear flavors are also a great option for adding flavor to royal icing without adding any color. If you use pure vanilla extract, your white icing might get a little bit duller, more like on the ivory side than bright white. The last thing I want to talk about is storing icing. You might not need all of this icing for your projects. And because all the ingredients are shelf stable, you can store royal icing in an airtight container at room temperature for up to two weeks. Before you use it again, you'll see that the royal icing might look a bit soft and deflated, but don't worry, just re-whip it using a paddle attachment on low speed and your royal icing will be perfect to use again. Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I'm sharing with you a kitchen basic and that is how to make perfect buttercream. If you've ever made cupcakes, you've probably come across this icing before. It's incredibly popular and a staple for baked goods. Buttercream is quite easy to make, but there are a few tips that will make it perfect that I'm going to share with you. So if you would like to learn how to make the most perfect buttercream, then just keep on watching. For basic buttercream, there are three ingredients you will need. Room temperature butter, sifted icing sugar, and lastly milk. I'll have the quantities in the information box and a printable recipe on my website. 
Start off by adding the butter to a medium sized mixing bowl or to a stand mixer. You will need to use some sort of electrical mixer to make this butter cream, as doing this by hand isn't really an option. Start to beat the butter. You will need to do this for about 5 minutes, which seems like a very, very long time, but it will make a huge difference. As you can see here, the difference between the butter at the start and after 5 minutes. The butter needs to be light and airy, it will double in size and lose a lot of its colour, which if you are not adding any colouring is really important. Scrape down the bowl a few times during beating just to make sure you're beating everything evenly. Once you've been beating the butter for at least 5 minutes and you have the right consistency, you're ready to start adding the icing sugar. Make sure you've sifted the icing sugar so there are no clumps. Add this about half a cup at a time, beating for a minute in between each addition so the icing sugar gets combined in well. Buttercream should start to get a lot thicker and harder to beat in the icing sugar when you have just the last bit to add. This is what the milk is for. Depending on what you are using the buttercream for depends on what consistency you would like. If you're piping, you'll most likely want a thinner consistency than if you were just going to spread it. Add the milk a teaspoon at a time, mixing until you have the consistency you would like. This is also when to add any flavourings or colourings. Piping the icing, I'm using a disposable piping bag and a Wilton 2D tip. I will have both of these listed in the information box if you are interested in them. Place the piping bag tip into the piping bag and fold the bag over so it's a lot easier to fill up. Fill the bag three quarters full and twist at the top to seal. ready to pipe. Alternatively, you can just use a knife to spread the icing onto the cupcakes or a cake or whichever icing you would like to ice. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!